are you all doing? Woo! Are you excited to be here? Super oh excited, gosh. man. Doing great. Doing Best great. Best week of the year. Best week of the Hands year. Down. Yeah. I, I thought it was Christmas, yeah. the most wonderful time of year. We are stand corrected. It is WPPI, the best time of the year. It's reunion. That's right. It Good is. to see it's all reunion. friends. My family. Me familia. I agree with Michelle. What's Christmas? What is that? No way. This is Christmas. This is Christmas. This is Christmas when you have this all-star cast up here is what I'm saying. This is Christmas right here. It, it's about people. It's about relationship. It's about connection yeah. and, and bringing that all back together. And then we inspire and beat off that. I love you. Oh. And, and this, this is why it's our group on clients, because they're already working the crowd. You see how they do this, right? They're already about clientele. You know, so I, had, I sent them all questions. So full disclosure, the majority of these questions, they've already kind of been privy to. Not all of them, because you got to keep some cards held back here, right? But I sent some questions because I really wanted to think about where were they when they got started? What, were, what was going through their mind? And, and what advice would they give themselves if they look back, right? So we're going to kind of dive into these questions. And Roberto, I'm going to have you kick things off. And what was your first professional client? My first professional client, I feel very, very bad for them. Uh, they should get their money back. I feel like writing them a letter and saying, I apologize for the horrific images I sent to you. But you were my first client, and you did pay for it, so it's on you <laughs> a little bit. But um, my first client, I, uh, it was about three days after I bought my first Canon 20D camera. And I only had a 28 to 300 millimeter lens. I did not know how to use either the lens or the camera. But I still showed up at the, at the I, I did their wedding. And I just, I don't know, I prayed. 90% of the photos did not come out, but they, did ne they never saw those. Okay, so it was all good. This was back in the day when the memory cards were two gigabytes and they were $500 each. <laughs> Feel very bad for them, but that was my first client. So they, they never saw 90% of the photos because you probably didn't either, right? It was back when you were trying to figure out I wanted everything. to see them, John, but they were so underexposed. I couldn't actually see them. They were too dark. <laughs> so wonderful, so wonderful. Michelle, what, what about you? Similar, similar? A little bit similar. My first job in the photography industry was at um, a wedding studio, and then I worked in a lab. I, I'm so old that my first digital camera was actually film. Okay. This will hey, be my, 30th... my first digital camera was film. Yeah, exactly. It's okay. This, this is okay. My, my 30th year in professional photography, and I've been really blessed to have such an, a long career. Uh, but my first actual client uh, that I booked myself after working for other studios and making all my mistakes on them. Remember that? Um, Apprenticeship. They, See, that's smart. Yeah. Pick up on that. Yeah. Make your mistakes with someone else. Yeah, totally. Good way to go. Uh, they, uh, it was a $500, very inexpensive wedding, and I had no idea what I was doing. I mean, literally no idea. I hadn't taken a class yet. I hadn't been educated. And... Like Roberto, I oftentimes want to send them their money back and a refund, and, and I hope that they don't open that wedding album in front of other wedding photographers and think, oh my gosh, what happened? I, uh, I often show the image, but I actually had a bride kissing a pumpkin head. And I don't know what I was thinking at the age of 22 when I said yes. It's fall. You have a, uh, a jack-o'-lantern pumpkin on your. You're on, kidding. On your... You're kidding. No, she, I made her turn and kiss a pumpkin head. This is wonderful. Okay, that's worse than me. This then is, this, this is on <laughs> camera, so this is wonderful. Yeah, yes, thank no. you. Turn and kiss the pumpkin head. Yes. It was bad, really bad. That's. This is this is getting better with each story. Bob, your first client experience. My first paying gig. My background's in photojournalism, and that was my first passion was actually shooting sports. We had a really good high school football team, and I was playing around, taking photographs, and my photography teacher said, you know, I bet the local newspaper would buy those from you. I'm like, really? I could get paid to do this? Are you kidding me? So the, the key to our success is persistence. So I'm always knocking on the door, calling. So I call up the local paper, you know, the Star. It was a community weekly newspaper. I call them up. I'm like, yeah, I'm at this. Allen B. Shepherd High School, our, our football team is going undefeated. You know, would you guys like some photographs? And I'm like, oh yeah, then we don't have to send anybody. So it was $15 per published image, and I was like, yes, this is what I want to do. Look at that. 
He, and, and you almost went into the next thing that I was asking. How did you keep finding clients after you got that first paid client? What did you do next? Did you say, okay, I'm going to keep doing this. I've, I've got to do sports anywhere. Or did you just start branching out? How did, you, how did you keep it going once you had that bug and said, I have to do this? It, it definitely is persistent. It's, I, I'm currently doing it right now. We're pursuing a high-level client, sending the work, sending telegrams, sending notes, knocking on that door. I don't take no or silence as no until they actually say, stop calling me. And then even, it's a no. And even then you keep calling? Well, I'll, I'll you know, follow up one well, more time. But you got to follow well, up at least you. once, right? Yeah, that's for sure. persistence for me has, has paid dividends. So it's always been whatever direction we want to go into. Be persistent and, you know, be confident. And always come from a place of trying to serve. It's not like, oh, I'm the best and this is what I could do for you. It, it really isn't about that. It's like, oh, I understand what your needs are and your goals. And I'm going to do my best to accomplish that. Absolutely. Michelle, so... You, you had that first client, and you were like, okay, uh, I made some mistakes under others, and then you're going off on your own. How did you keep finding clients when you were first starting? As a, I started as a wedding photographer in New York City, and I just started doing wedding expos and talking to people. And when you're young, you have no fear. And I think you started very young, too. You have no fear. And you don't have that idea of, like, I'm not good enough. I, I look I look back at that wedding now and know how bad it was, but at the time I was like, that's pretty damn good. You know? But wouldn't you agree though? Yeah. And I don't mean this in a rude way, clients don't know good from great, and if they love you right. and what you're doing, yes. and you capture that one beautiful moment, yes. they're gonna love it. That's 100% true. Um, mediocre photography sells sometimes better than the best photography. Um, because the client loves you. And when your client loves you and you create that relationship with them, then they love their images. If they've had a bad experience, even the best image will have a bad sort of aftertaste, right? They're like, well, it wasn't that great of an experience. These aren't that good. 100%. And credit where credit's due, I will always say one of, one of our other Canon team members says, beauty is in the eye of the checkbook holder. Ah, Hanson. <laughs> right. Agreed. Yeah, and, and it makes perfect sense, right? It makes perfect sense. Roberto, I, you, you had a not-so-great experience, right? But uh, how did, you said, okay, I want to do this. How did you, especially with the way that you approach, you know, photography and education, how did you say, okay, I'm going to go out and get a next client, a next client, a next client? Well, um, from the first wedding I did shoot that went terribly wrong, I did manage to photograph the bride and groom in different angles. And what I did was... That wedding was on Saturday, and I actually booked a wedding fair. You know those bridal fair things? I did one of those bridal fairs. I booked it on Sunday. So about four or five months before that bridal fair, I didn't even know I was going to have a wedding the day before. So luckily, I did the wedding. I went to Target, and I bought the pre-made mats with the pre-made frames. You know what I'm talking about? You can get like eight of them for like $5 or whatever, some terrible price. And I actually printed with my little tiny Canon printer a bunch of photos of the same bride in different angles so people would think it was different brides. You know what I mean? I didn't have any clients. I only had that one. So I had to fill up my booth with photos of weddings. So I put the bride in different angles from behind, from the side. When people walked by, they thought it was all these different weddings. So I booked about 10 weddings out of that, which was completely miracle and completely surprising, but that's the true story. I actually didn't even have the money to buy equipment, so I used their deposits when they were booking me, and then I used that deposit to buy my Canon gear to shoot their weddings. Pretty horrific, but that's how, that's how I got that's bit by amazing. the book. That's not horrific, that's amazing. <laughs> That's it, a great story. It's crazy. Yeah, you're getting it's applause crazy. already. That's a great story. <laughs> That's Thank it's you. better than Thank going you. in a bunch of debt, right? It is. Exactly, it's better than yeah. What's cur that? It's better than accruing a bunch of debt to buy all this gear. A hundred percent. I was smart about it. I didn't want to put money on credit cards and start buying things. I did use their, their deposits. Um, when, when they asked me where are my wedding albums, which I had none of, I just said they were too heavy to carry to the, to the booth. So we didn't have any, but you can see my beautiful work. And they were like, oh, I like your work. I was like, you do? All right. <laughs> you know, thanks, man. And, and that's <laughs> smart because, and, and it's like he knows the next question, right? And, and, and really, that does build into 
once you started doing this and, and, and you said, okay, I've got these clients, I'm coming in, I'm building all this work, I, I've got a business now, right? I need, I've, I've got this to be sustainable. What advice would you give yourself if you were actually starting out today, but nothing changed? You're your same age, you have a life, you have a family, you have a normal career and you're suddenly going to switch. You're not that, you know, you can't, you know, no fear going to do anything. Now you have fear, right? Fear of where that next paycheck is coming from because you have mouths to feel. What would that advice, because if you look out at the audience, right, that's a lot of those people. What is that advice to say, okay, you want to flip that switch. How do you do that? And, and your example was great because you, you didn't bleed any cash, right? You just started off, right? A lot of us might have said, well, I used my parents' money and I got a camera and it was great. <laughs> yeah. What would you do? Um, I think what Michelle said is actually quite interesting. Sometimes ignorance is bliss, is bliss you know? I, I wasn't aware of what I was getting into. I, I thought wedding photography was going to be something you can just show up to and shoot it. You take pictures of the wedding and you're good to go. It's, I, I've been doing this for 15 years and I've, been work, I've worked really hard at it. And I'm still learning how to do a really great job at a wedding. It is the most difficult type of photography you can do. You get one chance, people's emotions are high, and you have to be good at commercial, posting, lighting, family photography. You have to be as good as Bob in flashes and lighting, as good as Michelle in family portraits. You have to be Joe Grimes in commercial lighting. How do you do all of that with one workshop. person? Come to our workshops. That's how you do all you of know? that. Yeah. How do you do that with one person? My advice, looking back now, I would say, I think I did my clients a bit of a disservice to just showing up unprepared. I think um, if I could do it again, I would probably do what I do now is I purchase some mannequins and I do practice my flashes and my lightings with mannequins. That way I don't have an excuse, like I don't have any models to practice with. I bought mannequins from downtown LA. I put them and I create my lighting ratios. And I actually practice something that I would say is a big help for you guys. It's practice being speedy, fast. That's why they call them speed lights, right? They're supposed to be fast. If you're at a wedding working your speed lights and it takes you 20 minutes to get the groups synced, you are done. It's a lot of pressure to be a wedding portrait photographer. My advice is, not only work on your craft, but do it, work on how efficient and how fast you can set up your devices. That's what I would say. Absolutely, and, and Michelle and Bob, we'll get to you in a second, but to that point, this is something that I drive home, and of course I'm a little biased because I'm a trainer for Canon and I, I believe in education, but all of, all of these people up here are, are very much proponents of education and learning, and there's a big difference between being on set or being in front of a client and having to troubleshoot something because it's not working versus trying something because we want to try something. We're like the only industry that tries something with clients a little bit different. I wouldn't really feel comfortable if I was like Amen. on an airplane and they said, uh, ladies and gentlemen, welcome aboard. Uh, we're going to fly to uh, LA back today to LA, but uh, we're going to try something a little different. Uh, instead of flying there, normally we're going to go a little bit of 45 degree angle the whole way. Uh, just a little bit different. No worry. It's okay. It's safe, but I just want to try it because I can. Uh, I think all of us would get off the airplane, right? And so, so I love what you're saying that you would yeah. go back and you would you would do that. Now, again, I'm saying there's a difference between troubleshooting, because we all have to do that. You know, and, and so, Michelle, what would your advice be you know, to, to kind of say, oh, go back, but you're, you are still you? I'm not still new. I'm, I'm No, you. Years. You're still you. I'm still me. Yes, that's true. I was very fortunate. I started my career young, right out of high school, and I Im immediately got involved with organizations where I could learn quickly. And the people who were involved with the organizations and already professional photographers were smart enough to tell me not to start charging what I think I'm worth right now, because we all do that. And this is business, right? We pick up a camera, we fall in love with it, we think we're pretty good, we go to a couple of classes and we find out we have a lot to learn. And then we, we have that fear, I'm not good enough, no one's gonna hire me, no one's gonna like my work. And we have to push past that. You have to put yourself out there. You have to go out with what you have right now. And you have to charge in a way that is an industry standard. 
Um, and there's industry standards for very experienced photographers and for um, you know your particular demographic, where you live, what your market will hold. But don't undercharge and be super cheap just so you feel like you're going to get clients. That doesn't work because your rate of skill will increase faster than you can raise your prices. And what happens is when you start out super cheap, that's what people expect. And Mary's gonna tell Jane that this photographer's really good, but they're so cheap, you have to hire them. And when you realize, wait a second, I'm actually getting better at this and I need to make a profit and I'm not, and now you start looking at your numbers and you realize you really actually need to raise your prices in order to make a profit and maybe send your kids to college and go, to, go on a vacation occasionally. Um, don't undercharge or charge so, la uh, so little just so you can get the clients. It's not about the price. It's about the relationship you build with the clients and how you sell your work. So be fearless. Don't, don't sit behind your computer, work in Photoshop for four, 40 hours a week and not get out there and not sell yourself. You have to get out in your community. You have to be photographing people. You have to get people into your business, into your studio, wherever you shoot. Keep shooting, keep selling, keep getting better, but charge prices that are appropriate for industry standard and you will have a much easier time at building a business. Absolutely, superb advice, right? Especially because it, when, when I think about it from the outside, it's like, if I go to pay you money and then six months later I go to pay you again and, and your prices have skyrocketed, well, you better be ready to tell me why. Right? Oh, my I, skills have gotten better, right? I, I, you, you I just want to add to that. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. So the advice that I got early on was, you know, here's where you should be starting your pricing. And I had packages. So when I started shooting for other studios, I would get paid $250 for an entire wedding, no assistant. I mean, this is back in like 1994. Anyway, yes, I was alive then. I know what you're thinking. It's Botox. Um, anyway, just kidding. It is. But it is. Um, and the first time I booked my highest package, I almost peed myself. And I couldn't believe someone, and it was $5,000 back in 1994, which was a lot of money. And I wasn't someone there yet. Someone the inflation yet. numbers, yeah. I was not there yet. I was not a $5,000 photographer in 1994. But by the time that bride got married, I was. And that's especially important with wedding photography. You off, often book weddings a, a year out. And so you have to think in terms of where will my skill set be in a year? Is this gonna be profitable in a year? And so I remember going home that day and being like, this bride booked me for a $5,000 package. What am I gonna do? And I, I spent that year learning going to workshops, and by the time I got to that wedding, I felt I was worth that $5,000, and that kept turning into more clients, and more clients, and more clients. So sometimes there's a moment when we're selling, and we, we want to say the price to somebody, and you're like, it's $5,000, right? And, and, then they'll, and then they'll look at you like, because um, clients smell fear. And they'll be like, well, why are you $5,000? What do you mean $5, like $5,000? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you mean like $3,500 maybe? No. Are you busy? And so you kind of have to be like, no matter how frightened you are, you have to be like, so that's $5,000. Would you like to put that on your Amex today? And you're crapping yourself on the inside. You're like, <laughs> and then they hand you the Amex. We're going we're to yeah. do a whole and sale then, on asking for the sale, right? A yeah, whole workshop yeah. on just how they ask for the sale and close the deal. It's, it's one of the hardest things to do in sales, yeah. but it's just so relieving when it's done and you can kind of sit back. Right? It's great. And then we went out for a really nice dinner after that $5,000 Amex. Woo! Yeah. Best way to sell it. Well, then, Bob, what about you? Know, what about you? you, How you do got you? to step outside. You do the happy dance, right? Yeah, you do. Bob, you what's, do. what's your advice to yourself if you were starting off right now? Education. In, I grew, grew up in a very blue-collar family, and everything was about apprenticeship and mentorship and learning from others, a craft. And that's essentially what we're doing is the craft of photography. So you're gonna feed that passion for your creative side, instinctually. The other thing I would say is learn as much as you can about business and marketing because you could be technically proficient, you could be a wonderful artist, but if you don't have that confidence to make the phone ring, hire someone that will do that. Or do like I did and marry a Dawn. 
you know, my wife, I mean, she she really is the one who's built my favorite our thing brand. about Bob. Right? Everybody needs a Don. Everybody needs a Don. Everybody needs a Don. Because I'm the one that would be like, um, uh, what could you afford? I'll, I'll do it. I like you. This is going to be a great photo session. Are you kidding me? And Don's like, nope, nope. She's, she's the business side. She was an accountant. So thankfully, when we started our own business, is I'd talk to photography. I'd meet him because I'm the one that's going to be out with the bride and groom. And then Don's the closer. She'd come in, talk him over, and she's just really confident. She's the hammer. It's, it's knowing your skill set, right, and putting your aces in your places, right? If you, if you know you're a one-man show, one-person show, one-woman show, that you can do it all, then go for it, right? But if you know that you, you've got some weaknesses on the inside, that's where you start to partner with people. And, hey, if you can find that person in your, in your partner, great. That's well, even better. As, as artists, we all struggle with, are we worth that fee? You know, and we want to do the fun, creative stuff. Uh, oh, the, the money talking thing. I don't know. It just feels weird to me. You know, I just love doing this. So the fun, creative stuff is where we, where we, like, where we like to excel. But sometimes, you know, the beauty is the eye of the checkbook holder. We need that check to get you that need next that thing. that check. That's is, why it's most important, that business marketing. Is the client, though, always right? We hear that sometimes in business. So we're going to toss that around real quick. Do you think the client is always right? And if they're not, if they're just, if their vision is so far off, how do you course correct? How do you get them kind of back where they need to go? Michelle, I think you look ready. I, I am ready. Um, the most important thing you do as a business person is educate your client. And if there is a problem on the back end, you have failed somewhere in education. If there is a disconnect, a misunderstanding, if they're not like, oh, I didn't know this was the price, I didn't know I was gonna spend this kind of money, then you didn't educate them. And so as a business person, your collateral, what you hand out to your clients, your pricing, the booklets that talk about what you do, the emails that you send, everything has to be about fully educating them on your services, your prices, your products, so that in the end, there are no questions. And if a client comes to me and for whatever reason they're not happy with a portrait session, I'll do it over. I will do it over. And if they're still not happy, I will write a check. Here's your money back. I will never keep a client's money if they were not 100% satisfied. And it's my job to make that person walk away saying, I didn't really like the way I looked in those pictures, but she sure did take care of me. Right? And that's what people want. They want to be taken care of. And yes, you might, and as artists, we do this. What do you mean you don't like my amazing, gorgeous images? What is wrong with you? Right? We feel affronted when someone is unhappy with our work, but you can't take that personally. A lot of times, especially with women, right? You know, oh, I look, I look too heavy. My jaw is wide, you know, and we can, we can fix these things. We know that. But my job to a client is always to say, how can I make you happy? Period. Absolutely. And Roberto, sometimes your visions are, are grand, right? And, and they might be outside the realm of what your client can really grasp with the words that you might be able to put together as, as many adjectives as we can throw at clients. Sometimes they really just don't get it until we show them. Exactly. So how do you instill kind of confidence in them so that they know going into a moment, hey, it's really going to be okay? First, I want to say, you know, the, uh, we all talk about, like what Bob said, how photography is our passion, right? We love it. But you know what? Photography is our passion. But you know what's even more fun than photography? Making money, you know? And we do it with our passion. That's an amazing thing. But today, in the market, clients come in with their biases, right? They have a bias. They have a bias on what photography is to them. They don't know what quality is if it hit them in the face. They look at magazines, they look at Instagram all day. That's their bias, they come to you for the meeting. It is my job, like John just said, not to let my photos speak for themselves. Let you, you speak for your photos. You educate your client on what quality and skill level it took to create those photographs. If, if you show a client a bunch of great photos of your portfolio, they don't know if that's good or bad. It's hard to charge when they have no reference points. But when you show them how bad it could be and how good it will be with you, your photos are now being spoken to by you. I always tell people, tell your clients about how your skill level benefits them. 
Don't let your photos speak for themselves because you will lose money. You will lose sales. And it's, photography is a big money-making machine. Everybody loves photography. So why not understand the business side of it so we can make careers that are worth living, you know? So that's what I would say about clients being right. They're not right, they're right. I try to satisfy my clients, but I also understand that they come with a bias when they come to my studio. And it is our job to help them understand what it takes and why they're paying the prices that they're paying when they hire a true professional photographer. Absolutely. And, and Bob, I know that you kind of, you get a lot of these clients that are used to being on camera, right? So they're used to getting a lot of this all the time and, and they might have a, maybe even a kill contract and say, oh no, that one's never seen the light of day. How do you maybe work with them if, if you feel certain uh, passion about a certain image or things like that, that you might want to say, hey, actually, maybe give it a second look. Well, first and foremost, you have to come, again, through education, educate your client. But when you do have someone who comes with a particular look, there's power in no. There's nothing wrong with saying to a client, you know what, I hear you. That's not my style. But here, I have this great list of photographers that I think would be a better fit for you and put them in the right direction. They'll appreciate that more instead of me trying to adapt to something that's not my strength and try and change our style and change our look. And then aside from that, you know, if, if they still continue to go with you, ask a lot of questions. And I don't only communicate verbally, but I'll ask our clients, because my artistic might be conservative to their artistic. And I'm not afraid to say, hey, why don't you go on Pinterest Pick me out some looks that you like. Now, we're not going to copy that, but now I know we're speaking the same language. So I fully understand your needs because I truly want to serve you. It's not about the photograph I need to take. I've done this my whole life, so I don't go on any particular job thinking, I need this big, grand, cinematic photo if that's not what they're looking for. I, I will often tell clients who are contacting me for the first time, tell me what images on my website that you are attracted to. So I know what locations are interesting to them, what look is interesting to them. Do they like more casual? Do they like more formal? Do they want jeans? Do they want to be dressed up? So just directing them to the images that you've already created and asking which of these images speak to you, which do you feel like you can identify with. Um, that's especially important for high school seniors because they all have a different vision. They want something different than all of their friends did but they'll be able to at least visualize themselves in images that you've already created. Knowing where you found your client, where your client came from, is so important because it's go back to the same pond you were fishing in, right? I mean, obviously, if they were fishing there or how you were finding them, that's going to be a huge thing in addition to the connection point. So we have about five minutes left before Roberto is going to come back on stage for a live demo. So I want to make sure that you get some time with each of these people to get questions answered individually. So Roberto is going to be to the front left of the stage as you're looking at the stage. Michelle is going to be at the center of the stage. Bob Davis is going to be over here to the left of the stage, your right. Ladies and gentlemen, let's give them one more applause. Thank you so much for this panel. Come up and ask your questions, get them individually, and then we will see you throughout the rest of WPPI. Thank you again so much.